Oxford Bookworms, Stage 1 The Omega Files Short Stories By Jennifer Bassett Read by Gareth Armstrong Published and copyright Oxford University Press, 2007 EDI, European Department of Intelligence. There were two of them, Hawker and Jude. They had no other names, just Hawker and Jude. They were young, fast and clever. They worked for EDI in the European government. You know about the Americans' CIA and the Russians' KGB? Well, this was EDI, the European Department of Intelligence. Big secrets. Very strange secrets. The secrets of the Omega Files. They don't get into the newspapers, and most people never hear about them. Most people don't know anything about EDI. In the early years, Hawker and Jude travelled a lot. Brussels, Strasbourg, Rome, Delhi, Washington, North Africa, South America, Australia. No home, no family. Just work. They worked for the top man in the Brussels office of EDI, and only for him. He was called Arla. Nobody knew his real name, or much about him. Some said he was Latvian. Others said he was from another planet. He always gave the hard jobs to Hawker and Jude. The jobs with questions, but not many answers. The Omega Files. When I met them many years later, Hawker and Jude were about 70 years old. They lived very quietly in a little white house on a Greek island. They went walking, swimming, fishing. They sat in the sun and slept a lot. At first, they didn't want to talk about their work. We can't, said Jude. Our work was secret. It's all in the government files and nobody can read them. After thirty years, I said, People can read all secret government files. Not these files, Hawker said. It's a hundred years before people can read the EDI files. I looked at them. But I don't need to read the files, I said. I can get the stories from you. And I did. Here are some of them. Omega File 349 London, England There's a young man in London called Johnny Cook, Allah said. He's about 18. He doesn't have a home, but he goes clubbing nearly every night. Those all night dance clubs for young people. Here's a photograph of him. He put the photograph on the table 
and Jude and Hawker looked at it. And, Hawker said, he wants to sell a story to a newspaper, Allah said. Some story about a drug company. Find him. Talk to him. What's his story? I want to know. Jude and Hawker took an afternoon plane from Brussels to London and then went to a hotel. What are you going to wear tonight? said Jude. Not those old jeans, please. What's wrong with them? Hawker said. We're going clubbing, not out to dinner at the Ritz Hotel. Well, wear a different shirt then. That one's dirty. You can wash it for me, Hawker said. Get lost, said Jude. They had dinner, watched television for an hour or two, and then went out. It was a warm night, with a little rain now and then. London weather, said Hawker. They found a taxi with a young driver and got in. We're two, said the driver. We want to go clubbing, Jude said. Where's the best place this week? Do you know? Bruno's, the driver said. Or Garcia's, down by the river. Everybody's going there this week. OK, let's go, said Hawker. They went to Garcia's first, then moved on to Bruno's. They found Johnny Cook in a third club, called Monty's. It was two o'clock in the morning. That's him, all right. Hawker said. Look at his ear. Johnny Cook was tall and thin, with long yellow hair and two black earrings in his left ear. Johnny! Johnny Cook! shouted Jude suddenly. She ran and put her arms round Johnny Cook's neck. Hi, Johnny! You remember me? Jude, we met last week at Garcia's. You remember? Oh, this is my friend, Hawker. Hi, Johnny. Good to meet you, said Hawker. Hi, said Johnny Cook. He looked at Jude. Did we meet at Garcia's? Of course we did, laughed Jude. I was with Sarah and Patty and the others. Remember? Oh, yeah, said Johnny. I remember. He looked around. Are they here tonight? No, it's just me and Hawker tonight, said Jude. Come on, let's dance. They danced for two hours. Then they left with about ten other people and went across the river to a new club. The music there was louder and the dancing was very fast. After two more hours of dancing, Hawker was hot, tired and thirsty. I'm getting old, he said to Jude. Don't these people ever go to bed? You're only twenty-five, said Jude. That's not old. And you can't stop yet. He's getting very friendly now. And we can take him to breakfast soon. At seven o'clock, the club closed. And Jude and Hawker took Johnny back to their hotel. Jude picked up the phone and asked for three big breakfasts in the room. Hawker took his shoes off. Ah, that's better, he said.
he looked at Johnny. How often do you go clubbing, Johnny? And what do you do in the daytime? Not a lot. Sleep, usually. I go clubbing most nights. Where do you live? Hawker asked. On the streets, said Johnny. When I'm rich, I'm going to get a boat and live on that. Rich, Jude said. Oh, yes, we all want to be rich. But I am going to be rich, Johnny said. I've got a good story, see? He laughed. I'm going to sell it. A newspaper wants to give me 100,000 euros for it. They gave me 1,000 last month, and I'm going to get the other 99,000 very soon. Great, said Jude. So, what's the story then, Johnny? Have some more coffee and tell us all about it. Well, you know the Tyler Drug Company, Johnny began. They make drugs and medicines. Yes, Hawker said. It's a very big European company. They've got offices in all the big cities. Yeah, that's right, Johnny said. Well, they're taking young people off the streets and using them for tests. Jude laughed. Nobody's going to believe that, she said. Drug companies use animals, not people, for their tests. Some new drugs can be very dangerous at first. Nobody wants people to die from a new medicine. It's true, Johnny said angrily. Think about it. All those young, homeless people in London. They sleep every night along the Strand and other streets. Nobody wants to know them. Nobody asks questions about them. They've got no home, no family, nothing. But they've got legs, Hawker said. They can run away. You don't understand, said Johnny. Listen, I know, because I was there. I live on the streets, right? And late one night, along the Strand, they came and took me and some other people, a boy and two girls. They wanted to help us, they said. Hot food, nice beds, new clothes, everything. They took us to this big house. Where? said Hawker. I'm not saying where, said Johnny. And what happened? asked Jude. 